<laughs> Welcome back here today on the beautiful campus of Florida Panhandle Technical College. Another in our series of what's going on in the community, we have a treat today. We've got Sunland Center talking about their fall festival. Part two, we've got Beth Basford and Maria Johnson, both from Sunland, both longtime uh, associates of, of uh, Sunland. Beth, you usually shy away from the camera. You usually let the other ones come on. I, I really am glad that you're making an appearance today. Thank you. Sometimes what we can ask you gives us insight into things that nobody else can answer in your unique position at Sunland. Um, and Maria, welcome back. Uh, Thank we you. talked about Fall Festival last time you were on. Um, we talked a little bit about the storm, and it's been talked out. We know what's going on. But for, before I forget it, our hearts have been with you the entire time. Um, Thank you. We, know that you have a unique situation because not only do you deal with your own personal uh, residence and all of your personal property, but you have a much bigger umbrella to worry about and that being Sunland Center. How did Sunland Center fare, Beth, as far as overall uh, impact from the storm? Well, actually, um, Sunland really uh, sustained quite a bit of damage. We had, if you've ever been to the campus there, you know it's a uh, 500 plus acre, acre campus. Um, beautiful old trees. We lost a lot of trees. Um, thankfully, many of the trees um, had to be by the hand of God. You could go by and see where they were laid down beside the residential houses and not necessarily through or on the residential houses. Um, but we did have some structural damage to some of the offices and some of the buildings. But uh, the, the ma major loss, I think, would have been probably trees. Our pecan orchard did sustain some damage. The environmental park where the fall festival was held uh, certainly su sustained a lot of damage. We lost a lot of trees. Um, the main pavilion, the center stage, some of those were damaged by trees. Um, so it's been a process of cleanup, and we're still in process of that, but we've come quite a way. Now, did you have enough advance notice as far as when the severity of the storm started to worsen to, to the point where you did some evacuation or not? We did not evacuate. Okay. We hunkered down. <laughs> we okay. rode through the storm, and um, many of us were there for several days following. Um, it took a lot of hands on deck, a lot of people to be there. Everyone was safe. We had great leadership, um, great uh, teamwork, and we, we made it through. As difficult and challenging and destructive as that storm was, it certainly gave us opportunities to show what we were made of. Mm -hmm. yes. um, and, um, you know, some chose to stand and complain and still cry and gnash their teeth to this day. Others mm -hmm. rolled up their sleeves and got in there and did what it took. Yes. Um, and I think that it's pretty obvious who is who at this point. Um, I unfriended a lot of people on Facebook after they whined uh, for the hundredth time, not taking anything away from what they were going through, but everybody was in that same boat. Mm -hmm. Maria, um, how did it affect your programs? Did your, um, did your programs that you actually teach on campus, were they impacted in some way? Um, for about three weeks, mm -hmm. and that's all. So um, yeah, that's modest. Yeah, that's yeah. They um, they just carried on. That's the best thing in our population is to get back to normal as soon as possible. Yeah. Um, we talked a little bit with James and Maria about Fall Festival. Yes. Um, I kind of let the cat out of the bag about your fuel program, but I did want to make sure that were people to see just that segment that they were at least aware of it. Talk about how that came about and talk about the, the length and breadth of that program. Okay, well, I'm so glad you asked. Um, during the hurricane, if I can kind of back up just a little bit to give a little history, um, at, in the aftermath of the hurricane, we had a number of staff who certainly um, experienced a lot of personal loss in their homes. And um, while a lot of people in the county were able to get out during the day and go gather supplies, tarps, much needed, you know, just food and water, things, necessities, many of our people couldn't because they're there. You know, they have to be there doing their jobs. So when you get off work, um, Sometimes maybe the supplies have been um, depleted or, you know, you're in long lines. You were dealing with human lives. Absolutely. Not dissimilar to working with a nursing home or a hospital mm -hmm. or, or some, uh, some kind of facility mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. So, like you say, you had a much higher charge. You had a much higher level of responsibility. And um, even though you have shifts, I would imagine some people just simply didn't go home. That's true. That's very true. And our facility is a 24-7 facility. Uh, the individuals that live there, we have uh, about 210 that live there at Sunland, 
they're they're twenty four seven. So we are their family. We have sure. to take care of their needs. So backing up to what I was saying about the staff not being able necessarily to go and, and get the supplies that was necessary for their families, um, we had such an outpouring of support um, from the local community and broadly, not even just within Jackson County, from other counties, from Santa Rosa County, from North Alabama, uh, local churches that were able to get resources would share them with us. We had hot meals, we had, um, we set up in a vacant building, a distribution point there at Sunland and we would either go get things or we had people bringing truckloads of things to us. So we, we did well through that and we're so appreciative. So what we thought about for Fall Festival is if we did a canned food drive, it would be an opportunity to partner with the people that come out to support us and then take that food and and donate it to a local food bank. So that's that's the purpose of that. The um, group that will be coordinating that is the FUEL program. It's sponsored by our chaplain, Ruth Moore. And uh, FUEL means faith used in everyday life. Wow, so this is an opportunity to probably replenish all of your local food banks if, if, if you get enough of a response. It could, it could. Mm -hmm. We, you know, you've been to Fall Festival in the past and we, we have had crowds upwards of 6,000 people. Yeah, but the secret is how are you getting the word out to everybody that well, this is happening? today. Yeah. <laughs> and it will, of course, be in press releases that we'll put out in local papers and yeah. uh, Well, we know newspapers aren't being read very much anymore. Well, right, social media really I mean, is seriously, the way. I mean, right. No, no aspersion yeah. on newspapers, but they're, they're going away. Right. Yeah, well, I'll tell you what, we um, and our staff here at the school will make an effort, uh, a special effort in, in all of the social media available to us. That's great. Um, I think there's no more noble a cause um, than getting people. You know, it's amazing. Mm -hmm. Our Kiwanis Club here in, in Chipley at one time was addressed by a food bank and then a backpack program and then another backpack program mm -hmm. and then another food bank. I have to confess, even at my age, I had no idea we had so many local people that were going without, that were going hungry every single day, and that kids were being true. sent home with backpacks full of food mm -hmm. and instructions on how to how to hide that food so that their family so didn't that the take family it. So family won't take it. That's right. true. We have the what same in Jackson County. Yeah. And, oh yeah. Um, I'd love to tell you that our fuel program. Well, Mary um, Nell heads up the backpack. Yes, program, Mary Nell right? Griffin. Yeah. Yeah. But our fuel program at Sunland is. Um, is coordinated by the chaplain, but it's made up of the individuals that live there at Sunland, and they meet regularly, and they want to come up with ideas. What can we do to help people that are less fortunate than us? What can we do to help people? So they have done um, the backpack give back. They've been there to help coordinate, put the backpacks together. Mm -hmm. They've done food drives where we're bringing food in, the staff bring food in. The, um, currently, I think, Maria, correct me if I'm wrong, but they're doing the Ronald McDonald yes, House in the Tallahassee, tabs. collecting mm -hmm. the Coke tabs. And then they'll take them over and make that contribution. Um, the fires a couple of summers back over in Liberty Stan County, Hatchie, sure. Liberty County mm -hmm. yeah. um, they um, collected things and took to give to the people there. So they're very giving. The people that we serve, um, they really serve us. Yeah. Well, again, there's nothing more rewarding than doing for someone else. And if you've never right. done for someone else, give it a shot, and you're going to find it, that right. it kind of creeps up on you. Mm -hmm. You can't do it for the wrong reason. You can't That's do it right. to get your name in the newspaper or to, right. or to get some kind of special yeah. publicity. But when you truly, and they say that this, the that definition of sacrifice is giving something that you don't really necessarily have to spare. You know, mm -hmm. anybody can give you 10 bucks if they got a million dollars. But when that guy who's got $100 in his pockets gives you $10, that really means something because, you're again, right. they don't have that to spare. That's true. Um, so that brings another whole element to the to the festival. Is is have you themed this year's festival around that, or or is there is there a theme? No, not really. It's just an idea that we we um, kicked around and thought you know this would be a great way to show our support to the local community for what they did for us. Now, will you allow somebody to make a cash donation if they don't have canned goods with them? Would you be would you allow them to write you a check oh. or give you a few dollars in cash? You should probably consider that because, you know, uh -huh. frankly, I'm going to feel a little guilty if I get there and, I'm, and I don't know about this <laughs> right. and I didn't have a time to go to buy a bunch of green beans, uh -huh. then I may say, hey, can I just give you a $10 bill? And I understand handling money uh -huh. and all that opens up another whole ball of wax, right. but think about that. I really think that, okay. that you would do well. Uh, Maria, um, back to the fall festival, you um, head up the art program and you head up the art in the park event right. uh, uh, in the spring. 
Is that event going to be affected as well going forward, or do you think you're going to have the environmental park in enough, uh, enough good enough shape for that go this coming up this I'm spring? I'm really not sure if it would be ready for yeah. that first Saturday in May. Um, we did have an art show on campus, so um, they were able to show their work just sure. to the Sunland community. Yeah. But it's wonderful when the public can come see it. it well, really you know, is. again, as I mentioned, I think when, when you and, and uh, James were on the show, Many people don't know what Sunland is. You can drive by it on, on any of the various streets and or go through the industrial park and not really know whether it's an incarceration mm -hmm. facility or a hospital. Or, you just don't know. Right. Um, and um, and you guys are not in the hey here look at me business either. I understand that. Mm -hmm. And you do have a lot of privacy uh, and HIPAA issues that you're dealing with every single day. But at the end of the day, um, especially when you're having these kinds of events, it's important that the community knows the kind of people that have spent their entire career working and giving selflessly to your residents at Sunland. Um, you mentioned 250 some uh, odd uh, uh, residents. How many people do you have on staff right now? Uh, um, we have 610 as of today. Okay, so mm -hmm. better than two, two to one mm -hmm. ratio mm -hmm. uh, of staff to residents. I mean, that says it all right there. Mm -hmm. um, you, you've got a relatively new uh, administrator now, superintendent? We do, Marguerite Morgan is okay. our superintendent. She's been with us since March, doing a phenomenal job and um, uh, hit the ground running and lots of new ideas, lots of, uh, she keeps us busy, right. keeps us running. Well, Jerry and, and the past superintendents have always she, come over with you at some point. We yes. need to extend her that invitation. Yes. And make her, make her, know. and maybe even at the fall festival, we can catch her and uh, maybe let her see that we're kind of safe to, to be sure. around. And then, Absolutely. then some other time you can bring her here for okay. a, a more in depth conversation. Right. Um, how did um, uh, San Blas uh, make out? How did how did that area make out with your facility down there? They they did sustain some damage. They lost one of the fam family cabins. Um, I Simply have, blown away because yes. there's no trees there, obviously. No, no it was gone. Yeah. Um, but, and so the, that facility is actually closed right now for mm -hmm. some renovation. Um, I'm not sure what the timeline is, is on that for reconstruction and um, the work is in progress, I understand, but you know, it will take a while. Well, um, if and when uh, the next opportunity arises, um, if you can give us a heads up, I wouldn't mind bringing some of my students down and Great. allow them to shoot photo and video and, and, and to firsthand see what you guys do down there. My wife and I were uh, fortunate enough to visit several years ago. Mm -hmm. right. um, we still use some of that drone video and, and certainly we've yeah. distributed those photos that we took on mm -hmm. that occasion. Um, we were there with Camp Amigo, the burn yes. camp at the time with mm -hmm. the Tallahassee fire uh, fighters. Um, thanks so much for being here today. Is there anything else of note uh, before we leave that, uh, that uh, you just can't wait to tell us? Well, you know, we're just so excited to, to resume the festival. Last year was disappointing that we couldn't have this festival. It is the, our 40th year. Um, it did start many years ago as a family, a, a weekend uh, day so that families could come. It's more of a family day and staff, residents, and family get kind together. Kind of a homecoming almost. Uh, right, and it evolved over the years and local um, people wanted to be involved so we started accepting vendors and having crafts and food and entertainment. Um, it's, it's really grown and we want to keep that tradition going forward. Um, we are excited always to have the people from the community come out and support us, see what we do. And as you said, the residents that live there, they look forward to seeing familiar faces, people maybe they haven't seen since last fall festival, but they, they will remember you. Mm -hmm. In this case, it'll be they two do. years. Yes. Uh -huh. um, it's coming up on the beginning of the year-long uh, election cycle, so I would yes. imagine the politicians are going to be uh, there in proliferation, as they Probably always are. So. <laughs> the parade. Uh, and that's a great opportunity, certainly, certainly uh -huh. a good opportunity to uh, see and be seen. That's true. That's a great way for them to get out and meet their constituency. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, kiss hands and shake babies. Yes. Um, Maria, is anything else uh, in your department that we need to talk about before we go, go away uh, today? I think we've pretty much covered everything. I just hope that everyone will come out and join us that day. Hope it's a beautiful day, and I know it'll be fun. It our, always is. Our guests today have been Sunland Center. Uh, Center, um, my Boston accent coming back, uh, has been Sunland <laughs> Center in Mariana here with Beth Basford and Maria Johnson talking about all that is Sunland, but particularly the Fall Festival coming up the last Saturday in October, October 26th. Uh, it's all day. The parade kicks off at 9 o'clock, but you can come even prior to that when the gates open. Mm -hmm. uh, 70 or 80 vendors, according to James Godwin. Mm -hmm. uh, entertainment. There's food. You can pretty much find anything on a 
stick, just like you can in any <laughs> carnival atmosphere. Uh, so it's, it's really one that you don't want to mix. Thanks so much for, uh, for making the trip over here this morning. Thank you Great. for Thank having you. us. We'll be right back.